your own I'm gonna kill three birds with one stone, and I know I need to do daily videos, and I know our map's coming up, and I should definitely try to stretch things out. But, um, well, Zeos likes to be efficient sometimes, sometimes. This is the Emotiva C1 center channel, and it was sent to me by a fan, and he also sent me this, which is the Emotiva, uh, I think you're the S8, yeah, because you're written in giant font. And these, I think, are the E1s. What are you? E1 surround speaker. Boom, boom. So I have got center channel, rear channel, and subwoofer Emotiva right now. I'm still using the ohms to the fronts. And what was just playing was a song from the album The Savior by A Bad Think. And why why this is important is because it's mixed in surround sound. So we're going to talk about three things. These Emotiva products, surround sound music in general, and then I'm going to go over a brief overview over uh, the savior from a bad thing. Uh, starting with the speakers, because honestly that's the most boring part of this thing. I'm going to I'm going to get a little rant uh, towards the end about surround sound music and why it should definitely be a thing. Let's talk about things first. Uh, unfortunately, the owner who bought the Emotiva stuff, the sub, and specifically the rears, are no longer made. They're discontinued. And I'm like, because that sub is an 8-inch. It's a down-firing. I don't want to break my cable like I did on the other review. Down-firing 8. Rear-ported. Uh, three controls, you get your volume, you get your phase, you get your crossover, you get your on, off, and standby, here's your inputs, with RSA outputs in case you wanted to pass through. And the thing fucking knocks. It, it is like probably the best performing 8-inch I've ever heard. I listened to a couple 8-inch, it's not like a common size, but it was giving me confidence in it that I shouldn't have had, because I had it here, DMS was here for a weekend, because he loves to come and just sleep over my floor. And we had it up and we were like, is that that one? Yeah, it's that one. The other one's unplugged and these, I had shut those off. And it was really doing well. And then we started pushing the volume of everything else. And only when we were pushing it to the point of like, police coming, did it start to chuff. And we're like, oh, lower that, lower the gain. Because it was handling it beautifully. And if we go, to Mr. Webs the web zone. Here's the web zone for Emotiva. In subwoofers, they only have three currently. And there's not even an eight amongst them. There's an Airmotive S10 for 500, uh, an S12 for seven, and an S15 for a grand. And that's silly. Because if those have any of the pedigree that this does, and I believe they will, those are going to be some kick-ass subs, not to mention the fact that even though that's an 8-inch imported, this 12-inch is not ported. It has a down-firing, it's got a front-firing passive and the down-firing active, so it's got two 12-inch. And I would love to try that, so if anyone's interested in buying one of those, sending it to me, or maybe I'll speak to my contact, the Emotiva. I haven't done one of their subs ever, and this has made me itchy. So that's the sub out of the way. If you can grab yourself an S8 on clearance or something, do so. Moving on. The center is sold. $250. This is a lot of center for $250. I usually tell people, people come to me and say, Zeos, I have these old clip speakers and I can't find a matching center. Do not panic. You do indeed want to try to match the timber or the timbre, timbre? It's pronounced timbre even though it's an I, not an A, whatever from the left, the center, and the right. So if a sound does pass across, it doesn't sound soft and omnidirectional, sharp and pinpoint, soft and omnidirectional like it does in this particular scenario. However, I will put this statement down again, and I've said it before. Spend more money on your center than your left and right. If your left and right are cheap, shitty Walmart speakers that your grandma left you in 1996, Throw the money at the center. Throw those things away when you get the chance, but spend 
on the center. Get the biggest, baddest. Don't get a small little center to match your small little left and right, because as soon as you put one of these here, you want the biggest one possible. And although this isn't the hugest center, it's two five and a quarters, it does have, getting on my knees for this one, this vertical arrangement, which is their AMT, and then a little three inch with a real phase plug. So basically what we're looking at here is there is a little speaker, this, this is a little tiny speaker that's handling vocals, and this is backing everything up with some low end, and it does have rear port or ports. Might be singular. Wait, I'm lying to you. I just lied right to your face. There's no ports. Oh, I'm thinking about my, um, the other center channel that's in the house currently. Because I don't really deal in center channels. I built my whole living room to not have to worry about it. But the only other center I have does have a port back here. Ugh! Right there, little tiny port. It's the smallest thing. This is the um, JBL Studio Center to match the Studio 530s. Now, I put one of those in a yard sale. I gave one to my cousin. I have one in a box in the other room, and this is mine. And I'll tell you right off the bat, that is a better center channel than this. However, you can't buy that anymore. And if you can, it's gonna be on sale, probably on, I'll look for it. If JBL still has a couple, I'll link it. But if not, good luck. Because when that went out of stock originally, years ago, the price went from like $450 to like $1,100. And here's the thing, this has dual five and a quarters, four inch. I have to get like a bread knife to pry these things off. They don't have any ability to like, come up with a little tiny four inch there and there. And one compression driver. Whereas this has this vertical arrangement and that's because center channels are a bad design in general. Let me minimize this, you not got enough wallpaper. That's a potato chip by the way, in case you're wondering. Center channels are a bad design for this reason. I'm sitting in the middle. I hear that one, that one, that one, and that one perfectly in line. Well, if actually I'm down lower issue is you get a center channel because you have a lot of people spread out. So Uncle Jim Bob, who's here, hears that speaker driver on the end way after he hears this one. So you get this weird combing effect or um, probably not what it's referred to as a phase. It's just a phase imbalance where, you know, it's perfectly here. No, a normal center channel will have just three, left, right, and a tweeter. And when you move off, off axis, you get, it sounds weird, it just sounds weird. This mildly cures that, mildly, by doing this vertical arrangement, because it's trying to shove as much of the locatable frequencies as possible into a vertical singular speaker, so that no matter how far off axis you are, you're still hearing these two at the same time. You'll still get a little bit uh, weird timing with the outside, but that's hopefully to do just in the lower frequencies I'm guessing somewhere in like the 200 hertz and below. I'm hoping 300, I don't know the actual numbers, so I'm just spouting bullshit. By the way, um, if you haven't noticed, these are up on the sound drive stands, the black ones, which are currently back ordered everywhere. And that allows me to actually bring the projection screen down right here, and it sits underneath it. So if you ever need to raise up your center channel, a pair of the sound drive stands will do that for you. Uh, talked about that center, talked about that, talked about the sub. Let's talk about the rears. Another thing you cannot buy anymore, and I don't know why. Instead, you can buy the A1s, which are a wedge set. Now, I like, here, I'll put this down, this, this is my little table here, it's my workspace now. I like this pair, because obviously it's very flat. Covers come off nicely, it's got easy mount brackets there, the what? Oh, I dropped it, the wires are spring-loaded. It's front ported so that you could mount it straight in a wall. I could, if I, if I wasn't wired directly through this uh, Canto steel stand, which by the way, I'll link to the Canto steel stands, the wire goes in and up the tube and out the thing. Um, I would just hang it on the wall. But I have a problem with every rear channel in existence in America. And this is again my, there's a moth. Hello, Mr. Moth. Um, side channels, look, I run a 7, with the center ch in place, I have a 7.1. Center, left, right, side left, side right, and two rear channels, or two back channels, I should say. 
not gonna kill them off. Not then, no murder on a Z review, please. And the problem with a side channel, if it isn't a uh, dipole that's shooting in two directions, is it's very locatable. I know exactly when I'm sitting here, when the couch is moved up, and something goes flying past me, I don't hear a plane flying past me. I hear a plane become a focal point of sound and then fade out out of that speaker, possibly to the rear or to the back. And I don't know how I got onto this, but it was years ago and I've discussed it in previous videos. My rear channels, my normal rear channels, uh, are these sold as extra accessory. This is a Canto Ben and Canto has already informed me they do not plan on doing anything else with passive speakers. And that's unfortunate because this is a, was a very, very cheap coaxial tweeters in the center and it's a five and a quarter. It's a sealed box. So it didn't actually reduce any low end, but that was fine because what I ended up doing is, uh, I used to have speakers hanging on the wall. In fact, they're still over there. They're the Sound Appeal 6.5s. They were the cheapest center channel, six and a half front slot port, sharp ass tweeter. Boom, who gave a crap? And then I upgraded to a cheaper set, well, nearly cheaper set of these. And I had them here pointed forward and it did the same thing that I'm complaining about. Things moved from the front to the rear and I knew exactly where that speaker was and it sucks. So instead of going out and getting the big dual firing, I'll, I'll link to a bipole or dipole speaker in the description to show you what I'm talking about. Instead of doing that, I tried just laying it down on its ass and pointing it out. And that changed my entire perspective on how things should be done. And it stands to this day. I have not heard a surround sound of any budget that accomplishes what I have done by simply going, Bleh, I'm lazy. So for this setup, when I was testing these, I pointed them forward for about 14 minutes. And I went, oh, I remember why I don't do this anymore. Lay it on its ass. You want the drivers both as close to the wall as possible. The actual speaker stand is leaning touching the wall, touching the wall, so that this speaker washes the wall. And when you're sitting there, you hear sound from here, sound from here, sound from there, and sound from there. So now when that plane flies past, you hear wash, and then focal into the back channels. And they're very good at it. They're at least as good as these. These are a $60 pair. $60 a pair, it was ridiculous. They just were throwing them away. And these were not $60 a pair, but they still excel at it. And the thing is, you can't buy those anymore. You can buy those, which should accomplish the same thing. The only problem is, that's too much fucking money. $300, three, what are you selling? I'd have the same complaint about those as I did the SVS micro ones. For $300, you had better send me a complete speaker that can completely handle every frequency range and try to accomplish that. And I know that's not gonna, because it's not even ported. At least this was ported. It throws a little bit of like, uh, like in the, in the 80 hertz range, 75, 80. That, that is a smaller box and not ported. And then it's got the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And please stick with me for this. It has covers. Where the hell is my mouse? It has covers like these speakers have, the flat ones. And then you click this picture and that happens. And I don't understand. No, I don't understand. I don't know what the hell that is, but there's like a three and a half inch wedge cover for them. And I'll say this, don't spend that much on rear channels. If you're getting crazy dipole bipoles, you're gonna spend that much. You've got four drivers usually. It's a much bigger box. It's gonna need a lot of finishing, two grills. You're gonna spend $300. You could spend less. I had those um, those Fluants that were cheap and they worked great. But do you see Fluants in my wall? No, I went right back to those because I don't like that as much as I like the Upfire. And it only works, again, this is not something that'll work in every room, if you have Walls about equidistant, if you look at my room, I have about a foot to the right and about three feet to the left of the window. And everything else is centered. So my OCD goes, ah! But regardless of that, point this up, raise the volume a little bit on the receiver, you still get that same washing effect over the top of you. So that's the end of my rear channel rent. 
um, when I send these back to the guy, am I going to think about buying a set? Well, I can't, and I wouldn't buy that set because it's angled. If they're saying Atmos height and reflective speaker, maybe that's what that covers for, to so do some weird shit. Wait a second, is that, is that to put on top of your tower? Oh, shit, that's the, that's, okay, that makes more sense. It didn't click in my head. That's to actually mount to the top of one of their Emotiva tower speakers. It doesn't look like it's the right shape, but okay. And then you're supposed to bounce up and down, or, and that's the only speaker they make that is like a rear channel, so I'm assuming you'd get that put on the wall and it would angle down, which is fine, but again, it's not the same as bounce. Oh, and by the way, I'm an Oro 3D fan, not an Atmos or DTS-X fan. You can look that up on your own. I'm not starting that in this video. So, moving on to a bad thing. And there's a website that I can't remember right away. I just really wanted to get this started. But um, basically, uh, Michael Marquardt, Mar Marquardt, who is basically known as a producer or the drummer from A Flock of Seagulls, has his band, and he puts out this album called The Savior, and it's on Spotify. Here it is. I will link to it in the description of Spotify. But there's a problem when you listen to it on Spotify. It's stereo. And it's alternative rock, which is not like my favorite genre of music. But, you know, I'm going to listen to anything. This company, or the producer, or the manager, whoever, actually messaged me and said, hey, um, do you want to promote this music? Because, and I've never been contacted about promoting music before. So I'm not really sure how it goes. And they're like, look, can you put it in a sound demo? Can you talk about it? Can you tweet about it? And I'm like, well, what is it? What, why should I give a shit? And then they, told, then they told me, or I read it on the thing, that it was produced fully in surround sound. And I'm like, oh, you had my curiosity, and now you have my attention. So we went back and forth. They sent me some Blu-rays. I went, I don't have a Blu-ray player. Can you give it to me in five channel surround sound flack? And you know they've got smart people working there, because she went, yeah, hold on. And four days later, there was a zip file to download with every one of the tracks in a FLAC file that is surround sound. Yes, FLAC can be surround sound. Yes, FUBAR will load a surround sound FLAC file. Did you not know that? Well, now you do. I don't know if you're, this is available to purchase in this way yet, but I'm going to make them. Um, when I do sound demos with it, it's going to be hard because it's going to have to be compressed down to stereo. So let me talk about why this is great. So like I said, it's alternative rock. So it's very... We'll grow or die. I also should have full rights to play this music front to back. Because that's what happens when the artist sends it to you. Now whether or not they're still going to come down on me because YouTube is, is not um, paying that much attention to the world. Oh, the chosen one, the king's kind of the best part. Hold on. So, I don't have to worry about pausing it, but I'm gonna, so I can talk. Why can't I pause it? Okay. We have these, this and this outer track are the rears. This is left and right. That's the center. All the vocals are there. And just this blank line with a couple dots over there, that's the point one. And there's something that magical that happens when you listen to surround sound music that's really surround sound. Because here's the thing. My receiver... I could set it into any mode I want. Neo 6, DTS, audio, music, movies, orchestral, jazz club. I could fake surround sound all day. And when I bought that unit six years ago, I actually did a video on it. In fact, I'm going to find that video about the Task PAR200. Future Zeos, find one of your oldest videos because you're still back at the house in the Bronx. You bought this on eBay for $300 and it's a thousand dollar unit. You're like, it was so proud and it's got so many modes. And you can tell it to take a stereo track and fuck with it. It'll take a stereo track, which is basically 99.9999999999% of all the music in the world is stereo, left and right. 
And what it'll do is it'll listen for things that are happening at the exact same time in the front channels. And it says, well, that's the center now. Usually that's vocals, or the vocals could be off center. And then it'll listen for things that are out of phase, and that'll go to the rear. And then the subwoofer will just be the low end of whatever's playing, just like everything else. And that actually does sound acceptable. I love listening to some of my music in surround center, not pure audio file, just right, just left. But when you have a producer and an artist sit down at a mixing console that costs more than the house you're in and then say, yeah, we want this organ to come in 45% in the left rear and then slowly fade towards the front and then maybe move around to the back and then we're gonna have just a cymbal play there and then move all the frequencies from the bass kick into the drum, into the sub and then you have the center can be vocals either focused or you could blend the focal out a little bit more to get a really like omnipotent. I want more surround sound music and I want it now because this album is very chill like it's sit back and I shut the lights off and you can listen to let me skip over a little bit like that like here I'm gonna plug the center you ready so no center channel anymore You'll hear just the slightest echoey, sent, echoey vocals. And let's go to the rears. Actually, I have the ability, because I'm Zeos, I could actually mute the front. So now we just have sub and rears. That's playing out of there on purpose. That isn't something that's been rendered and thought of. You can see the LFE channels there, the right and left rear channels. They're all almost even. There's one with a female singing too that I really, really like. Uh, I think it's... It might be... I thought it was Hallelujah. It's not Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See if it's falling star. Skipping ahead. Like, look at this. That thumping, that's just center channel. That's just this. And that's a, that's a choice by a producer. That isn't some fake thing. So, the best way I could describe this is it's like the music is now all coming from a church. Everything sounds churchy. Everything sounds not like there's an echo, but like everything's deliberately in places. And when you only have stereo, you basically have the choice of, well, you can have it in the left, or you can have it in the right, or anywhere in the middle, the end. But putting it into surround sound, you can, the best way to experience it probably, if you don't have this album, if you can't get this album, or if you just want to see, go find a Blu-ray or if you can get Netflix to stream like a live concert. Like something, blah, 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 live in Miami. Just put that on because that'll be encoded in surround sound. Now being live and being in a studio and mixing this way is a little different. Because being live, there's gonna be the crowd screaming and probably the echo of the stadium is what you'll get in the rear. This is every instrument's being recorded, every instrument's on a board and he's going more here and it is fucking something to behold. I wanna hear other genre. I wanna hear Geschaffelstein. I wanna hear Run the Jewels if you give them six channels to play with. Could you, like just, I'm not saying he played it safe with this, there's a lot of stuff that's like, you definitely know this is a properly mixed surround sound album, but it's one of the only ones. And I don't think many audio, I would love to go to RMAF, which is coming up next week, by the way. I would love to have a surround sound set up at RMAF to demo surround sound music. When Super Audio CDs came out, I remember hearing that they were gonna be surround sound. And then that was abandoned just to make it higher quality 2.0, because no one was going for it. 
because audiophiles are already spending $45,000 for their front channels, they're not gonna spend another $45,000 for their rear channels, even though I'm standing here telling you, buy cheap shit, point it up. RB42 is pointed up, MB42 is pointed up. I feel like that's a song. Just put, surround sound is easy. People think it's so scary and hard. You get a receiver, you already have a left and right channel, presumably, the hell was that? Oh, that was me over here. Um, there it is on Spotify. You already have a center channel, presumably. Or you already have a left and right. Throw a center in. That's easy. And everyone's deathly afraid of the rear channels. Oh, but CEOs, I got to run wires and they're so long and I have to go like around. Well, if you have your setup like this, I have the hardest part ever because I have to get things to there. Granted, I have a little bit more insane things going on than most people, but it's just wire, and wire's cheap. And you can buy a 50-foot spool or a 100-foot spool for $14 on Amazon, linked in the description, a 100-foot spool of speaker wire. And then you just go down and you just run it along the floor, and if your wife's gonna kill you, then buy the casket early just just run it around and here's the best part you don't have to have a speaker stand with a speaker on top for this method you could just put that speaker on the floor just put it on the floor shove it behind if you have a space behind the couch you've got this much space behind a couch or on the side of a couch just put it on the floor put that speaker on the floor especially a speaker like this front ported grill cover so the cat can't well the cat could still step on it but you just don't want dust collecting on it and things like that and just just shove them on the floor get rear channels going because it adds so much depth to the sound of movies obviously is what i'm going to sell it to you with but then when you if you have the opportunity to listen to surround sound music really listen to surround sound music ah oh, ah oh, let me see where well, i'm going to find this next track hold on Just the center channel. Fronts come in, rears slightly less. No LFE yet. And there's a subwoofer. Listen to that thing go. The fact that I could see see that the rear channels are up at least as loud as the front is supposed to be is amazing and it's pulling it off no center where's this one i can't remember the song where there's a woman singing but it sounds tremendous falling star all right, I'm gonna ramble on and on and on and on. I know you guys love that, but people have places to be and people to be and places to do. So I'm gonna end on this. The Emotiva stuff. If you need a center channel, like I said, buy a big one. 250 is not bad. If it doesn't match your left and right, as long as it's better than, you never want to downgrade your center and keep a better left and right. Now I've got ohms, so I would pretty much not be able to put a center ever that would compete, unless I bought another ohm, or that. That with a subwoofer would probably be like the ultimate. But this is a perfectly good center channel. I love the design. It sounds really clear. I watched, what did I watch? I rewatched John Wick 1, 2, and 3, Parabellum, all on this with that center channel. Loved every second of it. The subwoofer, you can't buy, but if this is any indication of what the 10, 12, and 15 inch do, uh, link to Emotiva subwoofers. Rear channels, again, you cannot buy them. I will link to those weird angled ones, but I'm also just gonna link to a couple other cheap speakers. Any old bookshelf that you can blast and not worry about it exploding and just leave it in the back on the floor. If it's got a port on the back, like the micas do, you put little rubber feet on it and just get it off the floor. Give it that much space to breathe, and then you're gonna send most of the bass to this .1 sub anyway in the receiver, so just try it. Your little speaker stands I'll link, or you put them on the floor, you mount them to the wall, custom mount them to the wall with little bracket hooks, who cares? That's done. 
a bad thing. The album The Savior. I will link to the Spotify and I will try to link to the homepage where you can look at how it was produced and get possibly the Blu-ray. And I don't know if they're going to add an option. I'll talk to them before and see how the flak download might happen because this is probably the way pe most people are going to get it. Honest, it's 2019. Yes, Blu-ray players are a thing. Are you going to literally yank out a Blu-ray to listen to music? I won't. I don't even have one. So we'll see that. And surround sound music in general. If you know of any other albums that are properly mixed in surround sound, please tell me in the comments. I want them. I need them. I want to play. And if I didn't have my center hooked up, or this center hooked up, I could still play the center, the surround sound. It would just put that center channel track into the left and right, and I get a phantom center. Which is actually what I prefer, because I'm pretty sure my ohms are still better than this $250 center, and having them do the work would be just phenomenal. So, that's it for tonight. Alright, I, I had to talk about several things, I talked about them. Sub's great, doesn't, not available. Center's great, not as great as the JBL, but the JBL is also imaginary, because no one can buy it. Those are pretty solid. I don't, again, I don't want them pointing at me, and you can't buy them anymore. Um, a bad thing, the savior. How many tracks is that? It doesn't have track numbers. I think there's 18 tracks, something like that. A worthwhile listen if you like that sort of music. On Spotify, give it a, give it a listen. And then, if you want to hear what it's supposed to sound like, spend the effort, because it was not easy. Like, it's easy to get flack and have it play, but I had to make sure my foobar wasn't down mixing the stereo, and that it was wasabi outputting to my operating system and my operating system knows that it's 5.1 hooked up to a surround receiver and multi-channel in is set to that and then everything else is it, it was a couple steps that I kept messing up in the middle but once you get it working I show this to people it's one of those things that sounds good enough to be like hey hey I know you don't like alternative rock at all but come here and listen to uh, King's Crown for like six minutes actually four minutes and 15 seconds so it's one of those. It's one of those videos. that's like Zeus is just rambling about shit, but I'm pretty sure people join my Patreon and pay me to do that. So, hi patrons, you guys will get to see this first, and hi everybody else, you guys will get to see this about a week to two weeks later. If you want to see these videos first, join my Patreon. Five dollars a month gets you every video. Ten dollars a month gets you every video and into a private Telegram chat where I am and I answer questions. And there's 180 people in there, and they'll answer your questions too. Then they'll argue about wires and if they matter or don't matter but then it's like it's all they're all pretty normal people there most people there are normal um but there it's a fun place and uh you also get to participate in the yard sales from the five dollar tier and up so if i would have bought that and that and that and actually did buy one of these and it, i have another one to put possibly in the yard sale the last one sold for like the price i paid for it and i shipped it to another country so i actually lost money on it so i'm hesitant but I think if I tell you in a video, this center channel is better than most center channels I've ever heard on the face of the earth, even with only four inch drivers, you might bid a little more in it, which is fine. Pay for shipping, damn it. Um, that's all for today. Links galore, wallpaper, best girl from Dagashi Kashi, I'll fight you. And I'll see you all tomorrow with something normal.